started. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Licensing Subcommittee today, the 21st of February. My name is Councillor Ajda Ovat and I'm the Chair of Licensing. Before we begin, if I can have those present to introduce themselves, starting with the councillors on the committee and then the officers. Firstly, I'll start with the introduction. I'm Councillor Ajda Ovat, member for Northumberland Park and Chair of Licensing. Members, if you can now introduce yourselves. I'll go first then. Uh, I'm Councillor Ellen Weston. I'm a member of the Licensing Committee and I'm the one of the councillors for Hornsey Ward. Um, I'm Councillor Nick DaCosta. I'm also a member of the Licensing Committee and a member for Highgate Ward. Thank you. And now officers, can you introduce yourselves? Good evening. I'm Del Barrett. I'm the Licensing Team Leader. Legal. I'm Michelle Williams. I'm the legal advisor. Felicity yeah. Foley, I'm the committee's manager and I'm clerk in the meeting. And I'm Abby Laywola. I'm legal officer from London Borough of Harringay. Thank you so much. Um, I've noticed we have a few people um, um, externally in attendance. We've got a list of speakers um, for both the applicant and objectors. I'm just going to um, name those speakers. If you could please confirm your attendance so we know who is who. So for the applicant, we've got Jack Spiegler, representative for the applicant. Yes, Chair, thank you. Thank you. And we've got Nigel Owen. Yep. I'm here. Thank you. And for the objectors, I've got Festus Akinboyiwa, one of the, our officers. Are you in attendance? Chair, he's not online. Um, I've sent the link, um, but I'm not sure that they're actually online. OK, thank you. Um, we've got Leila Laksari. Leila, are you here? Greetings, yes, I'm here from Living on the Woods, and I have got one of my team members here with us as well. Thank you. Uh, we've got you as um, a speaker. We've got Alessia Petrova. Alessia Smalstiene, yeah, I'm the chair for the Resident Association in Rosa Luxembourg Apartments. Resident Association, thank you. We've got uh, Zulfi Bozdogan. Zulfi, are you here? No, we've got Elif Bozdogan. Elif, are you here? No, and we've got an Erin Bozdogan. Okay, so we've got um, two speakers. Sorry, who was that? OK, um, we've got two speakers in attendance at the moment for the objectors and we've got um, two speakers in attendance for the applicants uh, at present. So um, everyone else, um, if you could please keep yourself muted um, while I move on to the next item. Um, so now with the first item of the agenda, filming at meetings, please note this meeting is being recorded and will be available for public viewing. Item two, are there any apologies for absence? No, Chair. Could yes. I just say one thing? Some of the parents that uh, we've spoken to, residents have said that it is their time, the format of online is hard for them. And also it is a time when you're putting children to sleep. So in terms of access issue, that's something to bear in mind. Just want that to record. Thank you, Ms. Laksari. Uh, we've, we've been doing um, online um, for licensing committees, but we'll take that on board. Thank you. Um, OK, moving on. Uh, and also, if anyone does have any further questions, please put your virtual hands up in future. Thank you. OK, so item three, are there any items of urgent business? No, Chair. Thank you. Um, item four, do members have any declarations of interest? No. Thank you. Item five, summary of procedure. The procedure for the meeting has been emailed to all participants by the clerk. For the purposes of any members of the public watching, we'll first hear from the licensing officer. After that, the applicant will present their case to the subcommittee. The subcommittee and the objectors will have the opportunity to ask questions. Then the objectors will present their representation and the subcommittee and applicant will have the opportunity to ask questions. All parties will then have the opportunity to sum up 
and then the meeting will conclude to allow the subcommittee to deliberate and reach a decision. This decision will then be provided in writing within five working days of this meeting. Additionally, I'm going to note the ground rules for this remote hearing. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communication via the chair. Please ensure your cameras are open and that you are muted when you're not speaking. If you have technical difficulties, please use the chat function. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the committee. We will take all papers as read unless there is anything you wish to draw our attention to. All speakers will be allocated five minutes to speak. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time unless you request for an extension of time, which is at the discretion of the chair. Please do not share addresses of speakers and in the event that there be several speakers for each party, please avoid repetition and perhaps consider having a spokesperson to address all concerns. So before we move on to the next item, I understand the applicant has requested for an additional minute to speak. Um, the rest the request for six minutes. Is that correct, Mr. Speaker? Th thank you, Chair. I'll be I'll be around five minutes, but it may stray into six. Uh, that's I'll do my fine. Best, but that's okay. That's fine. I was going to allow that additional minute. Thank you. Um, but similarly, if anyone else requires an additional minute to the allocate five minutes, please let me know, and I will allow that additional minute. Um, so we'll move on now onto item six, application for a premises license at Mother Kelly's Unit 1 Rosa Luxemburg Apartments, 16 Ashley Road, Tottenham, London, N17 9S2. Um, Miss Barrett, please, can you introduce your report? Thank you, Chair. Um, noted that the panel has, in fact, read through the paperwork, Chair, but just to, a quick overview and, and to summarise. So this is for a new premises licence uh, for Mother Kelly's at Unit 1 Rosa Luxembourg Apartment. This is a new build. Um, it's a block of flats and, uh, you know, complete new redesign of um, the, the area in Ashley Road. Um, the application is submitted by MKN 15 Limited. And you've got chair 1.1 in the, um, the report, the times that's been sought. So they're going for late night refreshment, the sale of alcohol, um, and the latest hours being sought their chair on a Friday and a Saturday night through till midnight chair. Um, and the premises closing a half an hour later on those on Friday and the Saturday nights. Um, we've also got the non-standard timings that's been requested there, Chair, within the, the documentation, and that's on New Year's Day and on Sundays immediately before bank holiday Mondays as well. Um, there are, during the, the course of the um, consultation period, representations were received. You have the residents here this evening, Chair. The police had made representation also, Chair, and I know in the pack at page 73, you've got the initial police representation, but that has in fact now been superseded by um, some agreed conditions um, that Mr. Spiegler has has managed to mediate along um, with the police licensing officer. Um, I cannot, and apologies for this, I can't recall if I'd actually sent them over the, the revised conditions over. Ah, I had. Good. <laughs> I'm automatic there. Good. Um, so you've got the updated rep, um, the updated conditions that, that's been agreed there also, Chair. So as it stands, I believe the local authority, sorry, the, the noise officer's representation was also still outstanding. Uh, I think the main issues surrounding that, and I'm sure Mr. Speaker will be able to speak to it, was relating to the use of the outside area and what time for um that for, for that that use to cease basically and i don't think there has been agreement reached on that with the, the noise officer um you've got the the residents who have made representation here this evening are able to speak to you and let you know to verbalize their concerns and of course in determining this application the panel may decide to grant the application as requested to grant the application whilst imposing additional conditions or altering it in any way from the proposed schedule, exclude any license for activities or to reject the whole or part of the application 
Chair, just to note that obviously if this application is granted, then the premises will also benefit from the ability to do um, music on site because they'll be able to use the exemption between 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. each day for, should they wish to do so. Um, as I said, this is the application. It's for a, a tap room and bottle shop on the ground floor of this development. Um, and Chair, just to finish off, that you have got within the pack, or the, the legal officer will have the copies of the statement of licensing policy, as well as the section 182 guidance. Um, and of course, that the human rights does come in to, to play here in your considerations, Chair. Um, Chair, within the pack, the applicant, or Mr. Speaker, has actually sent through on his client's behalf some background information as to how the, the premises would want to or would would hope to operate and be managed across the um, day to day. And there's also issue um, information of other um, branches that they have in other areas of London chair um, that are currently operating. Um, Chair, there, I will leave it unless you have any questions for me. Yes. Thank you, Miss Barrett. Do members have any questions for Miss Barrett? No. Does the applicant have any questions for Miss Barrett? Uh, no, thank you, Chair. Just a point of clarification, which I'll address in my main submission. Any other points of clarification for Miss Barrett before we move on? Just wanted to know whether there was. Um, an objection from the nursery that is also neighbouring the barrel court. No, there was not. There was not. OK, thank you. Thank you. OK, we'll move on then. Um, we'll move on to the applicant, Mr Spiegler. Please, can you introduce yourself and then present the application? Please remember you have an additional minute, so you've got six minutes, uh, which you have um, after you introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Jack Spiegler, solicitor for the applicant, uh, and Mr Nigel Owen, uh, the applicant himself, is here to answer any questions, but I'll, I'll do the main submission, but he'll be on hand to answer questions um, afterwards. Uh, Chair, I'm also grateful to your officers for the inclusion of the supporting material in your papers and, and for you for, for reading those in advance, in particular the presentation at pages 35 to 47. Uh, Mr Owen, Nigel, is a, an independent business owner hoping to introduce his latest Mother Kelly's venue to Ashley Road in Tottenham Hale. You will see at page 29 of your report that he has written to the local residents. Uh, he has also met with the council's business crime uh, reduction partnership team and also the police, resulting in the withdrawal of their representation following the agreement of conditions. In addition, if you need any further convincing of Nigel's commitment to the local area, he is aiming to exclusively engage suppliers and employees based in Tottenham and the London Borough of Haringey, uh, with the exception of me, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, following some of this engagement, he has received local residents' support for his proposals, albeit unfortunately sent outside the consultation period, hence it not being in your papers. The terms of the original application are helpfully set out at page one of your report and following consultation with the responsible authorities and careful consideration of the representations, Nigel has voluntarily scaled back the hours and agreed additional conditions as follows. Firstly, he has agreed, and this is a, a point of clarification from Ms Barrett's helpful introduction, he has agreed the noise and nuisance officers propose reduction in hours in respect of Sunday to Thursday. And he has also agreed the conditions at page 67, including the condition restricting the use of the outside area until 10 p.m. So everything is agreed with the noise and nuisance officer, except for the proposed hours on Fridays and Saturdays, which the applicant maintains as applied for in the original application, which, as you'll know, chair are traditionally late on Fridays and Saturdays and indeed in court in accordance with your own policy hours. Uh, next, Nigel has agreed further comprehensive conditions aimed at promoting all four licensing objectives with the police, which I hope that you have seen in the supplemental report and in that document you can see that Nigel has worked with the 
uh, police to agree a strict set of conditions which directly address a number of the residents' concerns relating to match days at the Tottenham Hotspur uh, Stadium. Chair, I've just seen a hand raised. Would you like to address that? I think you're on mute, Chair. Sorry, it appears there's a technical issue. Um, Miss Lexari, if you could just leave and rejoin. Apologies, Mr. Speaker. I've, no I've stopped the time. I've stopped the timing as well, just to give that time. Thank um, you very much. Um, I'll just give it a, a, a minute for Ms. Lexari to get back in. I think she is back. Ms. Lexari? Yes. Okay, thank you. If you can put yourself on mute now, please. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to um, continue with the timing. Thank you, Chair. So, Chair, taking all of these amendments together, together with the points of clarification in Nigel's letter and the operational management documents in your report, we submit respectfully that the concerns raised in the representations have been addressed. Uh, briefly on policy, the hours are within and in fact less than the Council's preferred hours set out in paragraph 7.10 of the policy. The conditions proposed promote the licensing objectives policies of section 8. Um, uh, part eight of your policy and last but not least the application promotes the overriding policy objectives as set out in the introductory sections and particularly paragraph 2.1 which recognizes the many benefits of the positive growth and development in Tottenham. So in summary chair we invite you to please grant the application on the amended terms and in doing so we say that your decision would further the council's plans for Tottenham Hale to become a new district centre and in particular for uh, uh, mixed uses along Ashley Road, supporting leisure and the nighttime economy, which will bring animation and provide passive surveillance to the street, which in doing so can have a benefit uh, in reducing local crime and antisocial behaviour. Uh, Nigel aims to embed his business in Tottenham, supporting job creation by employing persons from the London Borough of Haringey and investing in the local economy by stocking products brewed or manufactured in Tottenham. In addition to all these local area benefits, Nigel, uh, who has, uh, he's a really experienced operator with an impeccable track record, has also demonstrated that his business will operate professionally alongside his neighbours and promote all four licensing objectives. Uh, Chair, uh, unless we can be of any further assistance, that concludes our initial submission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Spiegler. Do members have any questions for the applicant? No. Oh, Councillor Weston, yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, apologies if you can hear some crying. So, Layla, this is the sound of a child being put to bed um, or trying to be put to bed. Um, uh, my question was about one of the amended um, conditions that have been agreed with the police. Um, it was about a personal license holder being present um, on the premises throughout the permitted hours. Um, the wording that's appeared in the amended conditions adds in except in cases of emergency or staff illness um, and I just wondered was that amended wording agreed with the police and do you have any examples of the kind I mean staff illness is one thing but sort of emergencies and so on that might prevent that because obviously nobody would want to see that being interpreted so broadly yeah that essentially the exception, it was exceptional that there was a personal prem a license holder on the premises rather than the rule. So if I could just have some comments on that, that would be really helpful. Yeah, th thank you, Councillor. Uh, Nigel will, will come in, but the examples we discussed with the police, which which was agreed with the police, was if the, if the personal license holder was involved in a car accident on the way to work, um, as an, you know, as an extreme example. And, and, and Nigel is, is very keen to make sure that everything is completely compliant. So he wouldn't want to make sure that, you know, the, the, Nigel said it would be typical the day he had a routine inspection, the personal license holder was sick or, you know. Any further questions from members? Um, I've just got one question. I don't know if it's more of an uh, admin kind of uh, wording issue, um, but at page 16 of the um, the agenda within the application um, when it discusses bank holiday um, timings 
Um, it states um, 12.30 on Sundays immediate, immediately before bank holiday Mondays. Um, so this is for the non-standard timings. Um, but at page one of the agenda, it says until midnight on Sundays immediately before bank holiday Mondays. So I just wanted to get the correct timings of what's being requested. Thank you, Chair. Um, that's an excellent point. I think just looking at it now, the the non-standard timings for licensable activities on Sundays immediately before bank holiday Mondays is proposed at midnight. Whereas on page 16, I think the closing, yes, that's right. So the closing time, as opposed to licensable activities, the closing time on Sundays immediately before bank holidays will be half past midnight. Thank you for the clarification. OK, if members don't have any further questions, I'll move on to the objectors questions. So, Ms. Laksari. You're on mute, Ms. Laksari. Sorry, I'm asking my colleague Mark Adams to speak on our behalf. So, yeah. Hello. Yes, um, I've got three questions for Nick Stroke, um, Jack. Uh, the first one is, um, have you considered the council's um, policy for making down lane parks safer for all users? The council recently submitted, uh, which we are partners with as well, um, a bid to the Mayor's Green and Resilient Spaces Fund with a clear objective to make down lane parks safer than it currently is for all users. And I would like to know if, if yourselves have considered that in your, in your application work. That's the first question. Thank you. Would you like us to answer that now or, or all of them together? OK, all, uh, I'll ask the other two. The, the second one is um, in relation to the gate currently being installed and the boundary to our leasehold property um, by Barclay Square Developments. What is your assumptions about that gate being opened or closed? That's the second question. And when and the timing of any assumptions? And the third question is relating to one of the police conditions that you've agreed, which obviously is a step forward. Um, from an environmental point of view, we're, we're very, and I appreciate this is a police recommendation, but you have accepted it, that you anticipate using plastic glasses uh, a lot more when there are, you know, before a football match or a concert event and so on. And I just wondered if you have any uh, sort of comments on that, because obviously we're all trying to reduce plastic. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Adams. I'm going to hand. I'm going to hand. You've heard enough from me. I'm going to hand you over to Nigel, if that's okay, to take those points at risk of putting him on the spot. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you, and thank you all for spending your Tuesday evening here. Um, yeah, great. There's some really good questions there. I'm grateful for you to asking those. First one regarding safety, regarding the park. We've been speaking to Graham at the um, Better Town Centre team. And um, we've had some really good conversations with Graham about CCTV, actually. So we've actually we're looking to up our CCTV on the outside of the building so that we can actually have more of a view of both sides of the road and the frontage of the building and the whole of Ashley Road, really. Because my understanding after speaking to Graham is there isn't actually any CCTV on Ashley Road. So we've, we've had a really good conversation with Graham about actually increasing that CCTV that we will have and the footprints of CCTV. So hopefully if there are any issues that are around there, obviously folks can come to us and we'll be able to pull off CCTV footage. So that'd be one point. And regarding the gate, from my understanding from the landlord, and again, this is just my understanding, so don't take my word as gospel on this one, is that that pathway will be a throughway. Um, so that will happen. But in terms of the gate, the gate being built there is the first that I've actually heard of it. So in terms of the opening and closing hours of that gate, I don't actually know, but I can go away and I can find out from the landlord what they actually plan for that. Um, I've got no problem with that at all. And again, in terms of the plastics, so yeah, we've agreed with, um, one of the conditions with the police is to use plastics for all Premier League matches, along with a more extended risk assessment for all of those games. So, and one of those conditions is using plastics. So what we're actually doing, well, what we use already across all our sites is all biodegradable plastic. But what we're actually looking at doing, dependent on whether we can actually get them or not, 
we will have reusable polycarbonates that we can just wash, pack up and bring out, bring out again every time we use them. So fingers crossed we shouldn't actually be wasting any plastic within that. And I'll put a, another point along that in terms of rubbish as well. We would put it on our opening and closing. Well, our closing every day is to make sure we do do a thorough walk around of the area to make sure that you know we're leaving everything as clean. Thank you. Um, there are two other people that have their hands up, but as we don't have you as registered speakers, I cannot take your um, your questions. So it's only for the registered speakers, please. So Victoria and Jonathan, um, yes, please, if they could just be um, notified as attendees. Um, Jonathan, as well, we don't have you as a registered um, speaker, so I can't take your questions. Yeah, I think, I think just for clarification, uh, Jonathan's um, his letter is at page twenty-seven. Oh, of your okay. Report. So I think I think he was going to okay. come in to clarify that, that oh, game okay. point. I'm I'm guessing, but but I know you obviously know your comments. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Ms. Luck, sorry, do you have any further questions for the applicant? Your hand is up. You're on mute, Ms. Luck. Sorry. About uh, how can you know the gauge? So, if you're sorry. My understanding is you're actually assuming that you're going to be doing takeaways well, and sell outside of your premises rather than inside. Is that correct? No, it's just to make sure that if anything is gone out there, say something happens, we just go out there and we just make sure that everything is clear and tidy. We will, we are asking for a premises license to have off sales, but they will all be seals to take away. So, you know, if you want to come downstairs, get a beer and go back upstairs again for those type of sales. But we want to make sure that we're managing the area outside of the premises as best we can. And part of that, we're making sure that we're going out there and that anything that does happen, I don't know whether it's a pack of crisps that blows off the table, we're going out there and making sure that anything is picked up. So I'm, I'm sorry, um, Chair, I'm a bit confused. You don't have outside the space. The outside the space is either the park or in the street. So what is the domain? What is the place? Are you coming to clean the park if people are buying takeaway and then dropping the rubbish? Within no. our demise. Yeah, so this so is a, if, if I can, there's area. a plan. There's a plan at page, forgive me if you just bear with me. At page, oh, I've lost it. Page 49. Thank you, thank you very much. So at page 49 of the report, you'll see a thin external area to one corner of the premises, which would be, that's the outside area until 10 p.m. only, as agreed with the noise and nuisance officer. And then the off sales Nigel is describing is your typical retail sale of alcohol where somebody will come in, buy alcohol in sealed containers to take home with them. Ms. Laksari, yeah, do you I have one third so, question? Yeah, it's just taking from the answers you're giving, it's sort of consider, it's not considering what the council, Haringey Council has been trying to do, which is a key policy about reducing um, use of plastic, use of takeaways and rubbish, and also keeping the park safe from that kind of environment in terms of commuting. If you do not know about the gate, that is going to have major commercial impact. Ms. And I'm Ms. Like, sorry, if you can just keep it to a question and you will so have your turn to make your statement. Okay. We can address it later, but my understanding is, um, Nigel, if I'm correct, please, uh, if I'm wrong, correct me, that you do not know the dimension of the perimeters of what the use is going to be if you don't know whether or not the gate is going to be open. Because yes. we hold the license to the premises in the park for another two years as far as we are concerned that gate is not going to open for two years so i can only speak in terms of the demise around my around the building that we're we're speaking to so i'm speaking about the demise the internal and external demise of the, the license we've got in anything outside of that it's not really for me to speak about but in terms of managing our demise of the building we will be looking to make sure we're managing any rubbish that's outside any plastic and we'll make sure we've got the CCTV that's in place that covers our demise and as much as Astley Road and that wider area as possible 
is that we'll that's the area that we will be managing in terms of plastics you know i i think it's a great point you know we will be looking at how we use polycarbonates and reusable glasses as opposed to just single use throwaway throwaway glasses um will be something we'll be looking to and we're actually looking actively looking to do now for other venues thank you unless there's any further questions um or points of clarification i think i'm going to move on so are there any further questions for the applicants. Uh, Ms. Lexara, your hand, I don't know if it's a legacy hand. You're still on mute. I apologize. I yeah. apologize. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to now move on um, to the objectors. Uh, we'll now hear from those who have submitted representations objecting to the application. Uh, we'll have questions after the objectors have spoken. Um, so before you speak, please introduce yourself and then present your case. Please remember you have five minutes each, but um, as I mentioned earlier, if you require an additional minute, um, I will allow that. Um, so since I can't see Festus online, I'll ask Ms. Laksari um, if you could please introduce yourself and then um, make your submissions. Thank you. I have been having problem with my throat, but I try to read it from my statement. Um, so as eloquently as any solicitor will do, but uh, Living Under One Sun is a multi-award winning charity um, established in 2005 and provides services by and for the local community. We are leaseholder of the former pavilion and bowling green inside Downing Park. And with the boundary with Ashley Gardens development, where we run the Living on the Wilson Community Hub Cafe Gardens and growing spaces, food spaces. Um, the applicants states that the tap room is proposed to be open for an incredible hours, 13 or 14 hours daily, seven days a week from 10 a.m. And the details was already said, so I'm not going to repeat that. Now, um, the route of uh, going to the station to Hotspur, um, Tottenham Hotspur is not just for football, for many other events, um, including Beyonce's, for example. So it's going to be expected that there is an um, incredible amount of commuting that is going to happen. We have been working with Haringey Council over the past couple of years and, uh, London, and also the Mayor of London to try to make this park um, a park, which is a neighbourhood park rather than a uh, thoroughfare park. So we are very mindful about how commuting will happen from a station to to event spaces adjacent to us. And, you know, the, we, we are very mindful also that a lot of um, importance has to be paid that adjacent to the tap room, there are play area, um, playground area and a nursery and Harris Academy and many schools actually use the place as an outdoor space and classrooms. Um, so the children play area in the park is going to be immediately next to what's happening. Um, so including the family homes that Haringey Council has worked so hard to actually win uh, the heart and mind of the uh, residents in Tottenham by building family housing there. So we have been uh, meeting with a lot of residents who are very aware the impact is going to have on their daily commuting and life if there are outdoor in particular drinking happening and events drinking happening. So um, none of the Mother Kelly's uh, tap room in Bethnal Green, Stratford or Albert Embankment are in comparable area to what it is happening here locally. And that's really important consideration for the council to have in terms of their um, commitment to creating neighborhood concepts and neighborhood parks and neighborhood when so many new people are moving into the area. Um, given that there are there will be frequent events taking place at Tottenham Stadium, there is potential for drinking uh, to um, to be uh, quite substantial and tensions could build up and between supporters and also aggressive behavior as we have witnessed elsewhere in the area um, resulting a certain amount of behavior, uh, antisocial behavior in front of our residential area and where park users are going to experience. 
or hope is current, um, currently a welcoming and safe enclosed space valued by residents of all ages and all background, with different cultural background as well. Last year, 160 residents wrote objections to the planning application to install the gate from Beryl Link and the Hub Gardens. And at the same time, we express a lot of, uh, a lot of support has been expressed to creating a community a space and enclosed a space. So we think this is going to have impact on the neighborhood massively and the culture of the neighborhood. There are so many other places within the new development that these type of development can happen rather than that to be adjacent underneath of residential area adjacent to the community park where children of many cultures who do not have the economic background, they, they can use it for their health and well-being, which is again a major priority for um, usage of park and green spaces for having a resident. As we know, Tottenham residents, especially those in Tottenham Hill, uh, are dying seven years up to nine years younger than anybody else in Crouch and just the travel of bus 41. We want to promote health and well-being of our community to use the park safely. We don't want it to be a thorough, you know, um, a place where things can get potentially trashed and then we end up cleaning it up. Again, use of taxpayer buying police money and everything else. I do respect and I've been studying what Stephen has achieved elsewhere, sorry, Nigel has achieved elsewhere. So we can understand those create options for the different types of residents. But that Ms. particular Jack, sorry, space. Uh, sorry, you've reached five minutes. Do you require think, another minute? Um, I would be very grateful. I just think that it's fantastic that businesses are investing in our area. We are really pleased that different types of businesses are coming. We really encourage that and we are very grateful for the developments that are happening in the area. But there is a limit and there is a boundary that has to be drawn. For this particular area, we think um, it, it contradicts a lot of the um, priorities of our councils in terms of the types of employment, you know, whether it's gambling or drinking, it is employment, but it's the nature and the processes that happens and the impact it has. So we think Haringey has to actually consider the whole of its policies and procedures and priorities around health and well-being, access to clean air and parks and physical activities and so on and so forth before Thank considering you, this particular application. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Lexari. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, and the next um, objector that we have is Ms. Alicia Petrova. Um, Chair, it's Michelle, the legal advisor. I just had my hand up for a second. Yes. Um, just to say that, you know, I note that residents have a number of legitimate objections to the application, but just a reminder, really, Chair, that they should try and encompass them within the licensing objectives. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Yes, if everyone can. Please direct their, their comments in line with the licensing objectives. Thank you. Um, now, Ms. Petrova, um, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Good evening. Hi, Ms. Petrova. Day. Yeah, if you could introduce yourself and um, then you have five minutes. If you if you need um, an additional minute, I'll let you know when we've reached the five minutes to see if you need it. But you may start. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Alicia Smalstiene. Maybe it's a bit of confusion with my surname. Uh, my name is Alicia Smalstiene. I am the chair for Resident Association here in the Rosa Luxembourg apartment. Uh, so let me first of all read through our representation and then I will add a little bit of uh, just uh, thoughts of what residents think uh, of uh, what we think. So we have uh, interest in this application that is greater than the general public just because we are living in this building. We are the residents. And uh, today I'm representing 107 flats situated in both blocks of Rosa Luxembourg apartments. Uh, so we object to application on following grounds. The first one is uh, prevention of crime and disorder. So the beer taproom will attract masses of people, especially football fans. It, it, will, it will be working late night hours, causing residents uh, risk of losing their peace. Our building is inhabited with, by disabled people, single mothers. Uh, we need to put our children to bed early. And uh, the walls and windows, uh, they are somehow really thin. We can hear everything that is going on outside. We are afraid of drunken fights, of loud arguments, of rubbish dumping, 
uh, from the football fans attracted by the beer establishment. The flow of football football fans will attract um, will attract people after matches. People, uh, hundred people, thousands of people will be walking directly uh, next to the new beer establishment, and they might leave garbage behind. As a resident association, we are trying to prevent antisocial behavior. Um, we are doing our best to try to create safe and quiet environment. And uh, honestly saying, we almost felt betrayed when we found out that the late night uh, alcohol establishment business is going to be open uh, right our, under our windows. And uh, it will attract thousands of football fans. So our second representation was uh, preventing public nuisance. Uh, the opening of the beer tap room will uh, disturb the peace of the residents. Our building is occupied, as I said, by disabled people and um, single mothers with young children. And uh, some people, they cannot tolerate the late night noise. We have the residents uh, with asthma, who is living exactly on the first floor, right over the uh, commercial, commercial uh, premises. And uh, they, they need to keep their windows open in order to breathe. And um, we are afraid that the noise, that the conversations, that the music will prevate, prevent those disabled people from just having a nice, peaceful life. Um, late night beer establishment will, will create noise, but it will be interfering with uh, disabled people rest in the evenings. Um, the council provided the housing for us and promised to take care of our residents. Um, this license application, if it will be approved and the late night beer place is going to be opened, so it will definitely interfere with the disabled people peace, children's peace. We will be at risk of late night noise, uh, vibrations, maybe litter. So uh, I just wanted to say something like from my heart, from how we all feel here. Um, if my neighbor plays the music, I can hear it. I can't put ch children to bed. If somebody talking outside of the building, we can hear it. And uh, people, when they go to like nice place, nice beer tap room, as I'm sure Mother Kelly's will be a nice place, right? But it, you can't prevent people... Uh, talking outside, laughing outside, maybe fighting outside, we don't know, but even without fights, even without uh, any nonsense, people will be making noise. And we want uh, to have a peaceful, safe, quiet home, like everybody wants. We don't want the alcohol selling place to be opened right our, under our windows. We don't have anything against this particular business. I'm sure the business is nice. I'm sure the owner is amazing. We just want to have a safe and quiet home. Thank you. Thank you so much and apologies for your surname. I've had it recorded yeah, incorrectly. Okay. So thank you so much, Miss Alessia Smolstina. Thank you. Um, do members have any questions for the objectors? Do, does the applicant have any questions for the objectors? Oh, Councillor Weston, so, yeah. Thank, thanks so much. Um, sorry, it took me a while to put my hand up. Um, thanks to both Leila and Alessia for, for your representations. I, I think my question's probably directed more at Leila, um, but I think either of you might want to come back, or both of you, uh, obviously at the discretion of the chair. Um, I'm... I'm, I'm just trying to grapple a little bit with the idea that sort of where exactly your concerns lie in the fact that this business may open there um, and how that relates to events and so forth at Spurs. Because those events already take place. Football matches take place there regularly. Um, so I, I'm I'm a bit confused about why you think that this business will have such what sounds like such a profound impact i really understand your con that you're concerned about this and residents are concerned 
but I'd just like to understand why you think this business would have such a profound impact. So, for example, if you're walking from Tottenham Hale in the direction of the high road in order to get to um, Spurs, there's already a Tesco, there's already a um, Asda where you can purchase alcohol to, to take away. There are n a number of corner shops that are licensed to sell alcohol to take away. Um, and so I'm just really interested to understand so why you think this business will have such a profound effect, or such a profound adverse effect, which is what I understand your concerns to be um, on the sort of the, the general environment on those days. Yeah, Miss Laxar, I can see your hand up. Um, I don't know how much you know about the park itself, but when the uh, usually what happens during the uh, current matches and events is directed from the higher uh, is directed a particular part. It doesn't touch the park itself. People don't go through the park. But what happens if the gates is open and those um, the, there is no bar establishment within that? There is one called. Um, there is a pub on the way from the station called, it's a traditional pub, and that gets completely packed and it's called volunteer pubs. And that is traditionally where people go if they have to stop somewhere, but they don't touch the park at all. Having that gate open going through the residential area and where, where there is a pub underneath, a bar underneath, will change everything. And that is literally uh, shift all the traffics possibly coming from the high road and the surrounding of the park goes through the park. And if there are good days, like sunny days, and people want to chill out and do things and eat before they go, the commuting will actually focus right in the middle of the park or the residential area or the community house when the playground and children playground is. Does that sort of answer the question? It really changes the whole demographic. Uh, yeah, Actually, my, may I just quickly come back just yeah. for clarification? Because I do know the park, but I don't know that anything to do with the gate or the history of the gate. I've had my papers for this meeting, like all colleagues will have. Um, so is the, is your concern around the gate then, really? Both. Right. But if And if the gate was shut, you'd have less concern? Uh, for For residents... It's still massive concerns because there is the gathering behind the gate. Yeah, so I, yeah. I have to respect the representation that every day I have the residence, which is basically adjacent to our community hub and gardens. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Just saying that. So obviously we can't just represent living on the one side as one organization because we are a community hub. We have to represent the community that speaks to us. So the second issue is to do with the gate. As uh, Nigel quite correctly has mentioned, he doesn't know anything about the gate. So mm. it is a lot of assumption that that gate will open. But that gate, if it's not open, so the immediate uh, going through it will be limited. But there is mm. a plan to open another um, link, which is called Ashley Link, Ashley Road Link, which is a, again going to actually lead the, um, the tap room right into the park again. So we do have major concern about the location of the tap room. Uh, Ms. Smolstina. Uh, yes, yeah, so our main concern as a residents, so even for now, the crowds, uh, football crowds, they walk in from the Tottenham Hale, uh, they walk into the stadium. At the moment, they are not interested in our building. Uh, if we will have uh, um, nice beer place opened in our building, uh, so football fans will be definitely attracted to our building. So this is why we are against. We don't want noise. We don't want rubbish. We don't want uh, crowds of people right under our windows. Uh, as a, as a, any quiet residential road, for example, you live in, in a nice terraced house, you would not want uh, several like a little bit tipsy guys discussing the goal or like uh, the the win of the favorite team and this is normally happens in a like loud or happy or unhappy manner you would want to put your children to bed uh, in a nice and quiet atmosphere and we will lose it we 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 will we won't have any quiet evenings we will have uh, cheering or anything else that's this this is the the, the reason football Everybody will be attracted to our building. 
for now, football fans, they're not interested in Rosa Luxembourg. They don't need Rosa Luxembourg. They go to Tesco, they go to other places. But if we will have uh, alcohol selling place, Rosa Luxembourg will be a destination. We would like to have something uh, food related, maybe, yeah? Um, but if it would be something food related, nice coffee, which will be giving the residents uh, opportunities like to go and have some uh, like maybe lunch with kids, with families. Yes, I know we can go to beer place to have a lunch as well, even with kids. But this place will attract football fans, which will cause noise and we will lose our peace. That's why. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. I, I can see that uh, uh, Haim Selim's put his hands up, but um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we're just sticking to the official speakers that we have at hand, so I, I won't be able to take your your question. But I've just got a question, and I my question for the objectors are: um, considering that the applicant have have basically had an agreement um, on the conditions with the police and it's quite extensive conditions as well as um, agreeing to the noise nuisance team's conditions well the majority of it um, do you not think that this will mitigate your concerns in terms of noise nuisance um, particularly in, in respect of fans um, as a risk assessment um, has been done um, in relation to this so if I could have your your Responses to that, please. Sorry, um, Chair, are you directing a question to me or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for both of you, for both uh, of you. I, so, I, I've been working with police um, for many, many years and I've lo I looked at the list. They're not substantial in any ways. In a, I mean, they're, they're considered as a license um, application uh, uh, for the for, for the individual applicants. It's not considering the whole of the surrounding what's happening in Tottenham Hill. It's sort of divorced from the reality of Tottenham Hill and what's happening. Even I have machete fights in front of me. It takes about six, seven months for police reinforcement for anybody to come and see me. I've been working with all kinds of different crime prevention team for the past four years in the park. So in terms of what is on paper and what is actively actually engaged and given the lack of resources for our police and other things that are happening, I doubt it's, it's quite limited to just license issue, I understand, but it sort of has not considered the whole community aspects of it. Incident so, uh, yeah. you know, the incident log, very it's very, very basic what's happening with the incident log. And I just think that uh, it's very limited, I would say, yeah. Okay, uh, it doesn't give me confidence. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alicia, do you want to respond to my question? Um, you're on mute, Alicia. Sorry, unfortunately, yeah. uh, when the question was asked, uh, I was asking uh, one of our members uh, to, to redirect the questions for me so I can ask them. So mm -hmm. I missed the question. Can you yeah, there? so my question, uh, the gist of the question was, considering that there's extensive conditions that's been agreed with the police and also um, majority of the conditions placed by the noise nuisance team have been agreed by the applicant, do you not think that this will help mitigate your concerns about noise nuisance and other concerns regarding... Um, the, the the event days and fans are considering that a whole risk assessment was carried out. So just want to get your views. Uh, I would say that uh, the whole risk assessment was, was done and uh, how, to, how to word it right. Uh, it could be done officially, it could be agreed on the like acceptable level, but as a residence, we all know how it feels when you hear the noise and the conversations uh, and maybe songs or maybe like cheering outside of your windows. Uh, it could be it could be an acceptable level for outside for like for any commercial premises, but this is a residential home. Uh, in the residential home, I think we have a right to live in quiet environment. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if we cannot have any questions uh, on the chat, it's only for any technical difficulties. Um, the risk assessment is in the agenda pack, um, just for, for reference. Okay, um, do the applicant have any questions for the objectors? 
Uh, Chair, we don't have any questions as such, but we could perhaps clarify a few points. And I don't know whether you'd prefer us to do that in closing or, or for us to do it now. It um, yeah, if there's any points of clarification, I was going to come to that point. So if there is any points of clarification. Yeah, thank, thank you. Um, first of all, in respect of the gate, um, Mr. Luxari's representation at page 62 mentions that there's a separate planning application in respect of that, and perhaps that's the best forum to make a determination on that. And I know that um, Ms. Williams will be able to advise you on that and indeed submissions from uh, the, the objectors about alternative uses for the premises. Um, another point of clarification, Nigel is in fact, uh, despite some of the comments Ms. Luxari said, used to operate operating near large stadia. His premises in Stratford is close to the, uh, the West Ham football match and he has an excellent track record there and he's also used to operating in very close proximity to local residents as well um, <clears throat> in relation to concerns about large fights and football football fans that's um sort of a, again with Nigel's experience near the West Ham ground an alien concept to him because he works so hard to prevent that type of activity and he's worked hard with the police, not just the licensing police, but also the police in Tottenham that are on duty during match days and events, and also the Business Crime Reduction Partnership and agreed that comprehensive set of conditions. Those officers who are, of course, your expert advisors on crime disorder and match day management are content with the proposals now, so much so that they've withdrawn their objections. On, on rubbish, you've heard Nigel a commitment that he will collect rubbish outside. And then finally, just on, on noise, just to, to, to clarify a point on that. <clears throat> uh, we heard that um, residents open their windows. Um, on the contrary, Nigel's windows are fixed shut. He can't open his. Um, there's air conditioning, so there's no reason to open his windows. Uh, not that he can anyway. And um, there's no proposal for regulated entertainment. He's also reduced hours and agreed conditions with the noise and nuisance officer, who is, of course, your expert advisor on the public nuisance licensing objective. So hopefully that clarification provides some source of reassurance, um, together with a commitment from Nigel to, to continue engaging with the residents going forward, irrespective of your decision today. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Speaker. Before I move on to the summary, do does anyone else have any questions for the um, objectors? Um, Alicia, is it a point of clarification that you want to make? I just wanted to read a quick little short message from uh, the lady who lives about. Uh, um, about no. Above. no, sorry, it's, it's we we purely whoever's oh. made the yeah, so we can't take anything additional. Um, but yes, okay, I'm going to move on. Okay, so can each party now sum up, starting with the licensing officer, then the objectors, and finally the applicant? Please keep succinct. So, um, Miss Barrett, no summing up, Chair. You've got the the panel has the recommendations for the options open to it in in the report. Thank you, Miss Laksari. Sorry. I apologise. Um, I didn't hear what you said. I apologise sincerely. It's OK. It's it's summary stage. So if you can please sum up your um, your submissions and please keep succinct. Um, we are. We are very concerned uh, about the location of the. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We are concerned about the location of the premises. We do not believe that both the uh, noise uh, officers' reports on one and two and also the police reports are sufficient to actually either prevent. Um, the, there are suggestions that are good practice, but they're not necessarily going to prevent some of the very key things that we know about what happens with the residential area having to cope and, and a park, a community park that has to cope with the volume of um, commuters that will, the, the, the license will actually uh, attract. Uh, we are really concerned about that and we hope mm. um, that you, you do appreciate that while we are hoping that this kind of um, venue to be part of Tottenham Hill, but not to actually be in that location, mm -hmm. to be somewhere else where it can be much more in a main roads rather than a residential area and going through the park. 
Uh, we are very concerned about what the impact is. And that impact cannot just be measured by a few bullet points. It is the reality yes, exactly. um, of what happens. And we all know what that means. We experience it daily. Thank you, Ms. Laksari. Uh, Ms. Alicia Smostia, please summarize your points. So our first and uh, most important point uh, is that this um, uh, business will attract uh, the football fans uh, to our home, which will create noise, which will uh, cause us to lose the peaceful environment. Um, again, we would love for uh, this business to be in Tottenham, but just somewhere else, not under our windows. Um, and yeah, we are a little bit of con we are concerned for rubbish, for noise, and uh, for the late night opening hours. Thank you, Mr. Osnina. Okay, and the applicant, can you please summarise? Yeah, thank you. You've heard enough from me. I'm going to, uh, and thank you for that. I'll, I'll let Nigel um, finish the closing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, and to the two objectors, I'd say thank you for raising some of those points. I think some of the valid and outside of this meeting, if we do get license granted, I really look forward to working with you both and to all the residents there to make sure that we do manage and mitigate any kind of impact that we do have on any residents and any other businesses about that. But I do want to come to Tottenham and, you know, I'm really excited about Tottenham. I'm excited about how we build a community there. We've got some super interesting plans about getting great, the great kind of like creatives of Tottenham coming to help us build it and just, yeah, John, I'm just really excited about coming to Tottenham to be honest. And I'm excited about working with local residents to make sure that we manage, and like I said, mitigate any impact we do and trying to, you know, build a community around you folks, figure out how we get in and build a community around the people in that building, um, as well as the wider Tottenham. So yeah, just to kind of support us and build it as a business, whilst also, being some of you folks to come enjoy and yeah just basically I'm looking forward to coming to Tottenham is all I've really got to ask um I why I've not discussed this with Jack I don't know if it is the right point to say is we have also already set up an email address that I can give to folks that is just a separate email address for residents so they can have so any concerns any issues that they can come and they will come directly to me and not get lost in the world of emails that I have outside of that but yeah that's all I've got to ask. Thank you, Nigel. OK, so thank you all. We have now come to an end of this item. I ask that all parties please leave the meeting room so that the community members have an opportunity to deliberate and make a decision on the application. The parties will be notified of the decision in writing within five working days of this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, councillors. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Yeah.